You know, I, the other day I was late for work. And man, when you get past a certain time where I work, you can't find no parking spot, no way, no how, forget it. And I'm driving around, and I'm thinking to myself, man, I need a miracle right now for a parking spot. And all of a sudden, out of a clear blue, nice big parking spot. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said, I've just covered you. Praise yeah. the Lord. That parking spot was covered. And I just want to encourage you with that tonight. Mm. That when you're out there, mm. and you don't think there's no chance and no way and no happen, before you even get there, God has already covered you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's right. Before it even happens, you're already covered. If you're looking for a house, if you're looking for something that you want, before you get it, it's already been covered by yeah. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. If you're desiring something, it's already been covered. Amen. Now let's take a look at these four specific different curtains that were used in covering. Okay? And we're going to take a look at it from the inside out. Look at Exodus chapter 26. Verse 1, Moreover, the, thou, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twine linen. The first curtain that was seen, or the first curtain that is mentioned, is the fine twine linen. And it was actually the curtain that the priests saw when they were standing in the holy place. The roof that was above them was fine twine linen. It was a curtain of fine twine linen. It was all white. Okay? So that was what the priests saw as they were sitting at the table, fellowshipping with one another, or they may have gone over to the altar to offer up some incense. They would have above them the fine twine linen. Now what does that mean? That fine twine linen speaks of righteousness. And what God does when He covers us with His anointing, that anointing is inclusive of His righteousness. Okay? He says, I'm going to give you the ability to continue on, to continue to go, to continue to do my work, to let that anointing abide. But when that, that abiding anointing comes with righteousness. And let me tell you exactly what kind of righteousness it is. It's not outworked righteousness. It's not the righteousness you do. But it's what's called imputed righteousness. It was something that was given by God to man. Let's take a look at this, Romans chapter 4. There's a difference between outworked righteousness and imputed righteousness. The righteousness that was, co that was covering the holy place and the holy of holies, the righteousness that was covering the priests was imputed righteousness. What do I mean by imputed righteousness? It is righteousness that's given to you irregardless of what you've done. Romans chapter 4. It's righteousness that's given to you doesn't matter, you could have sinned ten times over. God says, I'm imputing you and accounting you as righteous. Now look at this for a moment. Why is the first thing that God covers us is with righteousness? Why? Because even though God is doing a work in us, even though we're committed in the presence of God in us, and even though we're filled with truth, because we still have got to deal with our own humanity, a lot of times when we, when we are walking with this thing, we're going to get our hands involved in the whole thing and we're going to mess things up. It's going to happen. A lot of times it's not even going to be our own fault. A lot of times it's not going to be our own intention. But because, simply because we're walking into areas that we've never walked into before, because we're touching something that is really holy in that sense, let's face it, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall. We're going to make an occasion sometimes and not do the right thing. You see, and because God is holy, the least thing that we do wrong can mess up the whole thing. You ladies may understand it when you go home and cook. Eh? Just leave that thing a little bit longer on the pot and the thing is spoiled. Leave it a little longer in the oven and it's spoiled. And God understands this. That when He's allowing His presence to come forth in us, when He's allowing this, this character of Christ to come forth, this life of God, He knows how many times we're going to be tempted, we're going to sin, we're going to mess things up, we're going to make mistakes, we're going to fall, we're going to mess things, we're going we're to think it's God when it's really not God at all sometimes. 
And God says, in spite of all the mistakes that you may make, and in spite of all the sin that you may do, in spite of all the things that you may want to do or try not to do, I'm still going to account righteousness to your account because I'm covering my work. Because it's my work, in spite of everything you do, I'm going to still account righteousness into your account because I know that you're working for me. So I'm covering it right now with my righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. I want to tell you something. I would not be here tonight if God didn't cover me with His righteousness. I just speak for myself. You know the mistakes I've made and the mess ups I've made and the things I've done wrong? You say, yeah, the preacher, the pastor, that's right. Anybody who thinks they don't make mistakes, they're idiots and fools. But in spite of all the things we, in spite of all the criticism that we may receive, in spite of all the people that say, oh, there's something wrong with that ministry. Something just isn't right. Yeah, what ministry isn't? Oh, there just isn't things right with that church. I'm going to leave. Well, go ahead, leave, because it doesn't matter, because God is still covering me with righteousness. And the work is still going to continue in spite of what I do, in spite of what you do, in spite of what the devil does, in spite of what anything else does, the work continues on. Why? Because He's covered us with righteousness. You see how important that righteousness is? Let's read this, Romans chapter 4. You see what that is? Now, without that righteousness, we can't go on. Because we would have so many... Listen, if God didn't cover us with righteousness... We would have messed up so many times, God would have had to take us and put us on the shelf. He'd have to say, man, just leave this thing there. I don't know what happened. Oh, we started out good, but something just got messed up along the way. And I, can't, I can't, just can't use it anymore. Has God ever said that to you? No. Has God ever said to you, well, you know, I, I started to do something. I had a plan. But why did you have to mess it up for? And you know something? God never says that. What does He do? He says, don't worry about it. I'm imputing righteousness over you right now. And I'm accounting righteousness to you. So this way my work is not touched. Romans chapter 4. And thank God He does it. Because if He didn't make me righteous, I would not be able to stand. I'd be put on the shelf. With all the mess ups I do and everything else, everybody does it. But he imputes righteousness, and thank God that he does. What does it mean? Look at this, verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Meaning that if God put it into his account, like you would give me a check tonight, take that check, and even though I have the physical money, I put it in the bank, the bank accounts that money to, my, to, my, to, my, to me. You see? It's accounted to me. Why? Because he believed. Meaning this. Look at me. If you continue... To have a heart to serve God, God will always impute righteousness to you so that you can work out the work of God. God is faithful. And if you want to work for Him, no matter how many times you may do things wrong, He'll always be there to impute righteousness to you and say, come on, you can do it. You can do it, boy. Go ahead, right ahead. I'm right with you. Because I'm imputing that righteousness to you. Let's take a look at the second covering. Turn back to Exodus chapter 26. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? That He imparts and imputes not our own righteousness, but He gives us the righteousness because we dare to believe God and say, God, let me continue to work for you. Let me continue to do this thing. And He just gives us the righteousness and says, you go right ahead and do it. I'm putting it into your accounts. That your sin, that your mess-ups, that your mistakes, that your failures, that your flaws, is not going to affect the work that I've started in you. Let's continue on. Look at this, Exodus chapter 26 and verse 7. And thou shalt make curtains of goat's hair to be covering upon the tabernacle. Now take a look at verse 14 as well. And thou shalt make a covering for the tent of ram skin dyed red. I'm going to stop it right there. And I'm going to specifically speak about the next two layers of curtains that were over the tabernacle, which was the goat's hair and the ram skin. And I'm including them together because the goat and the ram were both animals of sacrifice. Okay, And even though they were separate, they were still animals of sacrifice. And both of these speak about the covering of the blood. So what happens? First that God puts, the first curtain or the first layer or the first covering that God puts over us is His righteousness. 
But the thing that covers the righteousness is His blood. We're righteous, not because we did it. And God is not making us righteous because He's making it, He's just going and He's making an excuse for it. He's not saying, well, you did it, I'm not going to look at it. No. But He's even covering the righteousness that He gives us with the power of the blood. And the blood is outworked in two ways. The goat skin and the ram skin. They were both animals of sacrifice. Now what does that mean? The goat was for the specific purpose of letting us understand the power of forgiveness. Amen. The ram was to let us understand because the ram was always used for consecration. When, they were, when the priests were consecrated into the office, they were consecrated by the ram. And the Lord says the blood works not only by the power of forgiveness, but by the power of how much the blood separates you. Now let's speak about this in, in, in a little bit. And I want you to take a look at Leviticus chapter 16. Because the goat is outlined for us in Leviticus 16 as what you understand as the scapegoat. Have you ever heard the expression scapegoat? You don't understand the scapegoat? It's found in Leviticus 16. Let's take a look at it very quickly for a moment. This is beautiful. You see, the power of forgiveness, we need to understand how powerful forgiveness is when we receive it from God. Forgiveness comes by the blood. But what is forgiveness? Is forgiveness just saying, well, I pardon you? I just look at you and just go ahead, go on your own way. I, I knew that you did it, I'll just forgive you. That's not the power of forgiveness. Let me show you what the power of forgiveness is. This is beautiful. Look at Leviticus 16, please. And verse 5. And he, and he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two goats of the goat, uh, two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. You see the goat and the ram together over there. Okay? Verse 6. And, he, and Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle. Verse 8. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Now what did that mean? One for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. It meant this. The one that was for the Lord was to be slain and sacrificed and killed. The one that was a scapegoat was to be released out in the wilderness. Now what happens? Both of the goats got sins confessed over them. The goat for the Lord that was going to be slain, that goat, the priest would lay his hands on that goat and confess all the sins of Israel over that goat and then slay his throat and kill it. And then he would go over to the scapegoat and he would lay his hands on the scapegoat and confess the same sins that he just confessed over the, over the Lord's goat, confess the same sins over that goat, and then release it into the wilderness. And what was God saying in that? Well, first of all, the two goats are representative of Christ and us. The scapegoat for the Lord was Jesus Christ. He was the one that took all the sin upon him at Calvary and was slain for the sacrifice of sins. That was the scapegoat. That was the, goat. That was the Lord's goat. Jesus Christ is the Lord's goat. He took the sin of humanity upon Himself and was slain and was sacrificed for that sin. But now the same thing happens to us. We become the scapegoat because we're the ones that are guilty of doing the sins. But what does God do when He releases it out into the wilderness? What He's, re what he's saying is, He's saying there's no sin that can possibly hold you down anymore because the first goat took all the sin. So now the second goat was released out into the world to let them know that the, all that sin cannot be held against them. I'm released out in the world, meaning this, that I've been let loose into the world because the first goat took all the sin, I've been now let loose into the world to let me know that I don't have to carry the burdens of those sins anymore. That's why they were confessed over the goat and then released, to let the goat know that even though you did it, you don't have to carry the burden for it anymore. You see, and how beautiful, when the Lord covers you, He says, you don't have to worry about nothing. Don't carry any burden. Don't carry any false burden. Don't carry any burden for this thing or that thing. Don't, you don't have to be oppressed or heavy. Man, if this truth of the scapegoat ever got into us, we wouldn't worry about nothing no more. 
because we wouldn't carry that burden inside of us anymore. And how many of us walk around, we're released out in the world, but how many of us walk around with the burdens of those sins, never realizing that the burdens were carried at the cross. We don't have to carry those burdens. We're covered. Amen. I don't have to be oppressed. I don't have to be heavy. I don't have to, I don't have to worry about it. Hey, if anything happens, I don't have to worry about it. I'm not carrying the burden of that thing. The Lord Jesus Christ has covered me, so I don't have to carry the burden of it. Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. I don't have to be oppressed. I don't have to worry. I don't have to think of what's going to happen tomorrow. Some people go to bed and they can't even get to sleep because they've got so many things on their minds. Huh? People, and the devil is always right there to throw some burden on you, isn't he? To bring some past mistake up on the devil's always there to put an oppression on you, to make you feel oppressed. Hey, I don't have to carry none of it. Because the Lord Jesus Christ took it all for me. I, I don't have to carry any of those burdens because God has covered me. Amen. And my God, when you see the world today that the people, the people are in today, the people are filled with burdens, aren't they? I mean, unthinkable burdens that people carry. The burdens that some parents carry for their children. The, the burdens that some people carry in life because they were abused and were hurt. The, 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 the burdens that some people carry around because they've been through divorce or somebody, somebody injured them and somebody hurt them and somebody abused them. They walk around with that burden all through life. The burdens that some people carry because they're impoverished and they, they don't know where the next dollar is going to come to make ends meet. And they got the burden of those finances upon their mind thinking where, that, where in the world is, is it going to be. But thank God, look at, how, look at how important it is that you're covered. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You don't have to carry it anymore. We are covered tonight. I don't have to carry the burdens of what my grandparents did or my grancestors did. I can break the curses in Jesus' name and never carry the burden again. Amen. So many people live a life in this hour that are under the wrath and under the judgment of God. You don't have to carry that burden because Jesus Christ lifts the burden. And because He's covered us, I don't have to carry the burden anymore. I mean, look at what happens when we even come to church. How many people come to church all burdened down, weighted down? Some people would love to get to church, and they can't even get to church because they're so oppressed and so weighted down. Huh? My God, God cover them tonight. Let the truth of this covering come across us and let us know there's nothing stopping you if you want to get to God. Nothing stopping you. You don't have to let nothing stop you if you want to get there. No burdens can possibly hold you. There's nothing that you have to carry anymore that Jesus Christ did not carry. Oh, hallelujah. Now look at this. First was this, uh, the goat skin. Do you see that? What the Lord is saying to you tonight. Cast all your burdens upon the Lord for He cared for you. You see that? So, so can you make this confession tonight? Lord, Lord, I'm not going to worry about nothing. I'm not going to carry no burdens. Yes, amen. You just give it to the Lord. Because you're the scapegoat. Now let's take a look at the third, the third thing, which was the ram skin. The third layer of curtain. That is speaking about what? That's speaking about another aspect of the blood. And the ram skin was specifically used in the consecration of the priesthood. They would take what was called the ram of consecration and take the blood of the ram and sprinkle it upon the, the ear of the priest, the right thumb of the priest, and the right foot of the priest. Now look at what the blood does. When you're covered with the blood, the blood is going to separate how you hear, what you do, and where you walk. You see, you can be so covered by the blood in your ear that the only thing you ever hear is God. Because God wants to separate what, how you listen. Amen. And too many people are not covered because they're listening to every voice that's out there. They hear the voice of tradition. They hear the voice of religion. They hear the voice of poverty. They hear the voice of demons. They hear the voice of every other thing. And they, 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 they can't be covered because they're hearing abundance of other voices. God is saying... 
I want to separate how you listen to Nehaif and cause you to listen only to me and not listen to anybody else's voice. You see, and that's what covers you. If you can hear only him, you're covered. Because he wants to separate how you, how you listen. Amen? Amen? You see, I'm, a, a, a covering comes upon us when we don't listen to the voices of demons and listen to the voices of what spirits of unbelief, of doubt. When I don't listen to those voices, I get my, I get my ears separated and hear only God. I'm covered for that moment because nothing else can bother me then because I've heard God's voice. You see? Not only does He want to separate your ears so that you only hear Him, but He also wants to separate your hands so that you don't do nothing that is outside of His will. So that you don't put your hand to anything that is unclean, that is not of God. Amen. So God separates and says, I'm going to cover you, even in your very actions. So the very things you do, they're going to be done by me and not by you. Amen. How many times have you done something and you didn't even know what you were even doing, only to find out later it was the Lord a whole while? That's because God had separated you in that specific area. You were covered. Amen. And half of the time, we don't know what we're doing half of the time. Huh? Half of the time we're doing things and we're making decisions and we're doing half of the time we don't even know what we're doing. We're just doing it. And that's when we need to be covered. You see? Because God will cover us and say, Go ahead, it's my hand right now that's guiding you. It's my hand right now that's on you. And thank God that He covers us. Because sometimes we do things and many times we even look back and regret it, but thank God we can say that God's covered me and everything I've done is in the palm of His hands. You know, when you're covered, when you separate your hands, even the wrong things you've done will wind up in the will of God. Because He's covered. So I may have made a wrong decision. I may have done something wrong. God, cover me right now, Lord. Amen. Cover me because I did something wrong. Cover me. And God says, I want to take the bad that you did and make it out for good because you're covered. You're covered. You're covered. Hallelujah. You're covered. I mean, I, I know myself I've done a lot of things wrong. Sometimes I, I've done things, you know, went the wrong way. Made the, and then I look back and say, what did I do that for? The Lord says, you're covered. Because I'm going to take it and I'm going to turn around it for good. You're covered. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. How many times did we go through that thought in mind? Did I make the right decision? Did I do the right thing? Hey, you're covered. The Lord. And then finally He wants to cover your feet. Where you go. Mm -hmm. Where you go speaks about wh wh the decisions that you make in life and how your life is being directed. God wants to cover that. Amen. So that we don't go any place that we shouldn't be. So that we don't have fellowship with things that we shouldn't be. And some people even go to the wrong churches. Because God's got to cover them. They got to be covered in their feet. Amen? That was the ram skin. And look at what the blood does. The blood will separate your ears so that you only hear Him. It covers you. The blood will separate your actions so that you do things that are only for Him. And the Lord will also separate where you go, where you walk. And keep you out of a circumstance that could have brought disaster because God won't put you there. Man, I, I heard the testimony of one of our close friends just about two weeks ago. I believe it's uh, one of the sisters. She lives down, I think, uh, in Guyana, I believe it was. But anyhow, the story goes that she was supposed to be on a plane. She was supposed to be on a plane to go someplace. And she missed the plane. And I know the way this, this sister is. She's very particular and she's very on time with things. And... She, at the time when she missed that plane, man, she was jumping up and down and going crazy. That's what, that's what at least the, that's what they told me. That she was really irritable by what happened. Only to find out she took the next plane and then when she landed into the airport, she says, we landed into the airport and the airport was like very gloomy and very dark. Only to find out that the plane that she was supposed to take crashed and all the people on the plane died. And she said, I was supposed to be on that plane. You see? Now she didn't know what she was doing. As far as he knew, he was going to get on that plane. I mean, he didn't hear no voice from heaven saying, don't go on the plane, something's going to happen. But you see, because God had covered her, she didn't go where the disaster was going to take her. Because she was covered. So I, that's why I pray God, cover us. Cover us, Lord. Because there are things out there that we don't know what's going to fit. But God can cover us. Cover us and put the blood upon our hands and put the blood upon our feet so we don't wind up going places where we shouldn't be. He covers us. 
and keeps us out of the path of the devourer. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. That woman was covered. That was, a, that was a covering of God. And I say to you, that's an encouragement to all the saints. Let them know that we mean covered. Amen. Turn back to Leviticus, turn back to Exodus chapter 26 and we'll close with this. I, I just believe that the Lord, I'm seeing in the Spirit right now, the Lord just placing a covering over this whole place and over everybody that's here. A covering is coming. A covering. A covering. Look at this, Exodus 26 and we'll close it with this. Sweetheart, just, just check that tape for me please. This last covering is really important. Look at what he says here in verse 14. Is that tape still going? It says in verse 14, And I shall make a covering for the tent of ram skin dyed red, and a covering above of badger skins. And you know what badger skins were? They were gray looking. Not too appealing to the eye. Matter of fact, if you looked at it, you wouldn't give it a second look. Okay? And they were actually made out of the, seal, the skins of seals. Water seals. You know what seals, the color that their skin has got? That unattractive gray-like color? Well, that's exactly what was out on the outside. Now look at this. If you were on the inside, as a priest, you would see the beauty of the white linen, knowing that the righteousness covers you. But if you were on the outside, you would see some ugly skin. You wouldn't see nothing pretty on the, ugly, on the, on the, co on the covering of the, ta the sanctuary, because it was all gray-looking. And you know what God says? God said to me when I said, Lord, what, what is that gray skin speaking about? That ugly skin? What, what is that that would put the covering over the whole thing? And you know what He said? He said, those badger skins represent the ministries that I've placed in the church that minister my words. Because the word, without the word, you would not be able to even have the blood cover you. Because the blood comes to you when you confess the words. So the word that's ministered to you covers you with the blood and the blood covers the righteousness. The righteousness is the first curtain that covered it. But then over the righteousness was the blood. Meaning the, God is saying there's righteousness there because there's blood covering the righteousness. And the reason why the, the power of the blood is there for is because I place my ministries in the body of Christ that can minister my word with an anointing that causes the power of the blood to be made real in people's lives. Amen. And man, we can go into a whole other teaching with this. Because, you see, the badger skins weren't too attractive. And that's what God says. My ministries are not attractive to the world. People look at the ministries and you see, God doesn't want His ministries to look like $10 million prophets. You know, all souped up and all, you know, uh, you know all attractive and the, something that the world would want. God leaves something out there that's not too attractive. The world, and that's what God says. God says, I use the weakest, comely servants to do my bidding. And it's usually, it's the people that you think can never be used. That's the one that God anoints. The comely ones. The ones that nobody wants to look at. The ones that people think that there's nothing to them. God has chosen the foolish things of this world and the base things of this world to even confound those of the wise. Those are the badger skins. You see? They're not attractive. But what do they do? Because they're anointed. They bring forth the Word. And the Word causes the whole, the whole engine of everything that covers us to go into operation. And people say, I don't have to come to church. I don't have to have a pastor cover me. You are completely and totally deceived and I feel sorry for you. People say, I don't need a covering. How, how important the authority is. Because that's what that, that was the final covering over the whole tents. It was the authority of the, of the ministries, but not only just their own authority, but the authority they have in the, in the Word of God. Meaning that whatever authority these ministries have, they have it in the Word of God. And, because, and, and the reason why God has made them look great for is because He doesn't want nothing to attract from the world to attract what we're doing. You see? It's nothing spectacular here. You know what I'm saying? But it's powerful and it's enough to cover us from everything that works out there out in the world. And how important it is that we need that covering in our lives. 
even the, the coverings of the pastors and the prophets and the ministries that are in the church, how important those things are to cover us. Because when those ministries are there, you know what else comes with the benefits of being covered with authority? Prayer comes with that benefit. You need prayer to cover you. You see? And the ministries cover the whole thing to make sure that you're prayed for. Amen. And we should, make, we should make sure that people are being prayed for every Amen. day in this church. Every day in this church, somebody ought to be lifted up in prayer. And we pray for the people in this church that are covered with the prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. Covered with the prayers of the saints. You cover me with your prayers. I need you to cover me with your prayers, with your encouragements. Amen? God wants to cover us tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And stand to your feet tonight. Amen.